a young perspective on hot button issues around the world. This is The Hub. Hello and welcome to this edition of The Hub on CGTN Mongwen in Kampala, Uganda, the heart of Africa. Welcome to the program. Now, China-Africa relations are in focus as the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation kicks off in Beijing. What is at stake between China and the African states? And what is the future of China-Africa engagement? We talked to a whole host of stakeholders regarding this issue. Zhang Lijong is the Chinese ambassador to Uganda. Ambassador Zhang, thank you so much for joining us on CGTN. Thank you. Talking about China-Uganda relations, uh, we had this relationship all the way back to the 1960s. Uh, how would you reflect on this 60-year-plus uh, journey between China and Uganda? China and Uganda established diplomatic relationship in the year 1962, nine days after Uganda gained its independence. Uh, China-Uganda relationship has always been uh, friendly, close, and mutually supportive in the past 62 years. And Uganda friends have told me that China supported Africa's struggle against imperialism, colonialism, and also support African countries' development in the past years. In 2019, China-Uganda relationship was elevated to a comprehensive, cooperative uh, relationship with the strategic guidance by the leaders of the two countries. Our relationship have enjoyed good momentum. And as a matter of fact, it has reached the best time in history. Talking about bilateral trade and investment relations, uh, bilateral trade exceeded $1 billion in the year 2023. Another way to look at it is uh, bilateral relations doubled itself in a span of just five years. And um, Uganda is becoming a, a popular destination for some sectors of the Chinese businesses coming here to invest. How have those Chinese development programs, uh, businesses and investments made a difference um, to uh, society of Uganda? As a matter of fact, uh, Chinese companies have actively participate in the Belt and Road Initiative in Uganda. And they have been very much involved in some uh, landmark projects. Uh, in the infrastructure, for example, the Entebbe Kampala Expressway has been quite successful and has brought good social and economic impacts. Every traveler, when they come to Uganda, they will take on the road of, of this Kampala Entebbe Expressway. And they, they will feel amazed to see the beautiful sceneries along the expressway, as well as the good quality of this expressway. And they may thought that they were in a developed country, but as a matter of fact, the Uganda is still a least developed country with over 1,000 US dollars per capita GDP. In the clean energies, uh, Chinese companies have built several landmark projects, uh, including Ishimba hydropower plant as well as Kaluma hydropower plant. Take Kaluma hydropower plant as an example. Uh, this project was financed by Chinese financial institutions and built by Chinese companies. It was handed over not long ago to the Uganda site. And it has increased the building capacity of the electricity for Uganda by 50% and also reduced the cost of electricity by 50 Seventeen percent. That has brought immense benefit to Uganda. And Uganda has become an electricity storage for the East African countries. And it has the ability to export extra electricities to the neighboring countries like South Sudan, like uh, Congo, and other uh, areas. 
So uh, these uh, development uh, has been very successful and has contributed to social and economic development uh, in Uganda. This is attributed to, to the principle of uh, wide extensive consultation and cooperation with shared benefits that also demonstrates the, uh, the, that the Belt Road Initiative is uh, vibrant and has a bright future. FACOG is a very important mechanism binding China and Africa ever since uh, 20 years ago, since its inception. We're expecting FACOG to take place in Beijing in September under the theme of speeding up modernization, building a high-level China-Africa community of shared future. What is your understanding, Ambassador Zhang, of this year's theme, and how do you expect that to deliver for Africa and for China? Yes, we're going to have this FACOG New Summit uh, to be held in September in Beijing. And African countries are looking forward to it. The FOCAC is a gathering of family between China and African countries. And also is a very important platform for cooperations between these two sides. So Uganda will also send high level delegations to this summit. And we expect this summit will bring more you know, potentials for the development of China-African relationship and open new chapter for China-Africa high-level community with a shared future. Ambassador Zhang, bilateral trade exceeded $1 billion. Uh, that is a new threshold. But uh, looking at it uh, another way, it is still uh, not as big as uh, China's relations with other countries or Uganda's uh, trading relations with its regional partners. Uh, what holds the most potential for further growth? What sectors do you think uh, are most promising going forward? China-African cooperation follows the needs of African countries. African Union has the agenda 2063. Uganda has the vision 2040. China has advocated the Belt Road Initiative and the global development initiative, global security initiative, and global civilization initiatives. So what we are going to do is to enhance the synergy of development strategies of each side. So the potentiality for cooperation is very big. You know, last year at the China-Africa Leaders Summit, uh, President Xi Jinping has proposed three initiatives to support the common development of African countries, namely supporting Africa's industrialization, uh, supporting Africa's agricultural modernization, and also supporting China-Africa cooperation on talent development. So these areas are the priority areas uh, for China-African uh, countries, as well as for China-Uganda uh, uh, cooperations. Take Uganda for example. Uganda encourages value addition. So we encourage Chinese companies in to invest more in these areas, such as agricultural processing. Uh, Uganda is very much rich in its agricultural products, like uh, good quality coffee, avocado, uh, pineapples. So these are uh, areas for cooperation uh, in the processing sectors. Uganda also encourages industrializations. Our industrial parks has been playing a very good role uh, in providing new employment, uh, in the localization of the industries, in providing affordable uh, um, price of products. Uh, so we hope that the investors uh, will come to Uganda to invest in these areas and uh, to provide more high-end manufacturing uh, products to the Uganda market. Uh, that is meeting the needs of the local market. Yeah. In the tourism sectors, I think we have a lot of things to do. Tourism is encouraged by the Uganda, and uh, Uganda has uh, rich uh, tourism resources, like Lake Victoria, 
uh, like chimpanzee, mm. wildlife, national parks. Uh, in terms of national parks, Uganda has developed very early and they have gained uh, much experiences in management of uh, national parks. Uh, even China can learn from it. So all these areas that we can cooperate and I believe our future is quite uh, bright. Ambassador John, there have been concerns here in Uganda, um, in some parts of Africa, and also uh, an issue amplified by uh, the Western media and their narratives on Chinese in engagement with Africa, that uh, China is somehow portrayed as a, a country that's extracting natural resources from Africa, uh, where the trade and the investment relations is one-sided, benefiting China largely. Um, what would be your response to those allegations? Death trap, new colonialism, are fabrications and lies by some Western forces to smear and even to stop China-Africa mutually beneficial corporations. These things will never happen in the future and they didn't happen uh, in the past. And facts speak for themselves. China pursues mutually beneficial corporations, abide by non-interference, and does not attach any political conditions to these uh, assistance uh, to Uganda and also to the whole, to the whole uh, Africa. And also, I, I believe the local people have the most say on these issues. Many Ugandan people tell me that you know, in the past, Colonists develop themselves through the uh, labor uh, of slaves, you know, and also through uh, exploration of the natural resources in African countries. But China is different from, from the past, from those people. Uh, China developed itself by his own effort as well as pursuing the mutually beneficial cooperations uh, with uh, the African countries. So that's why we say that Chinese modernization has provided new alternative to developing countries on the path to modernizations on their own conditions. Ambassador Zhang, Global Civilization Initiative is uh, the latest addition to President Xi's solutions initiatives globally. Uh, and the Uganda-China relations are considered a, a model in that regard. If you look at the Confucius Institute here, the uh, medical teams that China has sent over the decades to help Ugandans, and also the development projects, aid projects over there. How are they faring? How are they progressing over the years? President Xi Jinping has proposed a global uh, civilization initiative, which has received warm welcome and active response uh, from African countries, including Uganda. As you know, not too long ago, the United Nations General Assembly has adopted a resolution to establish International Day of Dialogue among Civilizations. And Uganda is a member of a core group for that resolution that demonstrates the active response from the Uganda side to this uh, great initiative. Uh, as you said that uh, we have uh, medical uh, teams uh, in Uganda. The medical teams uh, has been in Uganda uh, since the year uh, 1983. And so far, around 23 batches of doctors uh, have been dispatched to Uganda. And this have served the local community uh, quite well. There are about uh, 270,000 patients who have received treatment uh, from these Chinese doctors. Also, these uh, doctors frequently go to the local community to uh, provide a free service uh, to, to the local people, and they are warmly welcomed uh, in uh, Uganda. In the education field, China also established the Confucius Institute uh, in Macquarie University, the Confucius class uh, in, the, uh, uh, in another uh, technology uh, institute. This program uh, has uh, trained uh, around 20,000 uh, local language learners. Uh, also, they have trained uh, uh, around 200 
uh, local teachers for, for Mandarin. So these teachers, after they gained this language skill, they, they work in different schools in Uganda and help spread uh, this language, also enhance the exchanges of culture between the two sides. With these programs, the uh, understanding uh, between the two sides and people-to-people -people exchanges has been greatly uh, enhanced. For example, uh, those uh, learners who have uh, gained the, the, the ability to speak Mandarin uh, have a better opportunity to get a job in the local market. Ambassador Zhang, thank you so much for your time and for all your help in facilitating this trip to Uganda. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you. You're welcome. We all enter this world with a universal greeting. <laughs> we then learn to speak. <laughs> Though our languages, cultures and traditions may differ, we still share one thing in common. We have hope for humanity and the world. General Railway Company Deutsche Director of the International the for United Nations Climate Hear the difference. Join our global network to connect with the world. Focus, focus on what's relevant in China and the world. Bridge the, bridge the gap between what you know and what you want to know. This is The Hub. We're here on the mission. We're told by our friends that the learning of the Chinese language and cultures is quite popular here in Uganda. It's gaining traction among the young people. We're here to find out, and we're told that there's, there are a few better places to go than the Confucius Institute at Maklele University. So, let's go find out. Yes. Dr. JJ, so good to see you. Uh, yes. Thank you for having us here. You're welcome. It's a great university, and obviously it's made even better. Maybe you can start off by telling us a bit about the, the passion among the uh, Uganda students in learning Chinese, and how has this university, uh, this uh, facility in particular, helped that process? Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Gilbert Gumoshabe. I'm the director of Confucius Institute at Makerere University. We are now celebrating 10 years yeah, yeah. of existence as a Confucius Institute. What I can say about what China has done to Uganda is what people cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. Chinese has been embraced. From the Confucius Institute, we have spread over and Chinese is taught in all the corners of Uganda. It has a national character. We are teaching Chinese from senior one or secondary school level one up to secondary school level six this year. The first students will sit national examinations to join university having studied Chinese. So meaning the Chinese language is one of the optional tests for college entrance? Yes, uh, uh, the entrance of, to the university next year. We shall have okay. students who have qualified with Chinese as one of the subjects. So meaning if they can pass the Chinese test, it can be a plus for their college enrollment? Yes, uh, even a student can now enroll directly from Uganda to China uh -huh. without having to undergo the studying of Chinese because they already have competence for six years of studying Chinese as a language. So we have made that a uh, stride and we are successful with it. And the people who are teaching them are Ugandans. So we have made that investment. We thank the government of China for sponsoring the teachers. We retrain the teachers for a period of nine months, non-stop. By the time they come back, they have already finished HSK4, some have even finished HSK5, and they are able to go and teach Chinese at the lower level. So intensive training of the teachers going back to China, I mean, or going to China, and then coming back to teach the Ugandan no, students? we teach them, we, we train them here, here in Uganda, okay. at Yurian's Institute of Technology, where we have a Confucius classroom. With the Chinese, Ugandans have embraced it. Northern Uganda, we have schools. Northwestern Uganda, we have schools. Mid uh, Central Uganda, we have schools. Western Uganda, Eastern Uganda, we have all those schools spread over. As of now, over 100 schools are teaching Chinese. And the demand for it is increasing. As you may notice, in Uganda, China has made great investment. The, the biggest number of industries and factories in Uganda are by the Chinese. So they are the uh, foreign direct investors in Uganda that are holding a bigger chunk of our industrial sector. And 
as we all know, Chinese, they come when they do not know a lot, uh, much English. And they want people who know Chinese. And as a result, many people are getting employment. And we thank the government of China for doing that. And opening up to the world with a mutual benefit for both China and Uganda. Yeah, that was uh, the question I was going to ask you. Uh, what do you think is driving the growing passion among the Ugandans uh, to learn Chinese, to pick up the Chinese language? I mean, it's not precisely an easy language to learn. If you compare it to, to English or to Spanish, you said that there's a more robust commercial engagement, uh, more Chinese investors coming here, employing locals. What about the cultural aspect? China is in a special way, I would say, because I have been here for some time and have seen what goes on. Where it's true that China has a different rating system compared to, say, English. But all languages are equally complex in terms of learning. You only need to be to bring to a certain age. And you will easily understand the language, speak it, and write it. And that has been proved. Students here are learning Chinese. They know how to write it. They know how to read it. They understand it. And they speak it. So that one is not a big problem. But then at the same time, Everything goes with the incentive that's associated with it. The career prospects? There are many career prospects if you do Chinese. Because China has opened up to the world. China is a big economy. You need to move around. If you don't find, anything, if you don't find 60% of what is in the supermarkets made in China. 60%? Yes. We also have those which are made in Uganda and a number of them by the Chinese companies. So they are contributing directly to the economic growth of Uganda. On the cultural aspect, part of it, China's culture is good, highly embracing, just like our Ugandan cultures. For us, we have a multitude of cultures. But then when you look at the way China takes itself and the way the Chinese conduct themselves, you need to understand the cultures and you get the background of the two. The Chinese culture is human in nature. It is not imposed. You only need to learn the culture and know how to live with that culture. So it is not a big problem. And even anyway, here as Confucius Institute, part of our mandate is, teach, is, mandate is to teach language and culture. Get the background of what takes place in China. I've been there a number of times. I'm always welcome. And even when I see how their interaction, you don't see people moving out from you. You actually see people coming closer to you. And it exactly tells when they say people, people for mutual benefit. Benefit and I also benefit. It works out very well. New Year's Oshana, Karajita for Longiba, Bolin Land, our Fugana, which in page of Dengita, Gajon, you said that before, Gajon, you said that off as well in the shoulder, Kashi, yes, in Jungo Hua, Dosha, no, Kuni, you will say, Jungo Hua. It's the song called Jungo Hua, Chinese language. And because Jungo Hua includes some rap parts, and Africans have quite a natural talent in this area. They are learning Chinese through songs. Many students develop a greater interest in Chinese culture after learning the language, which motivates them to further study Chinese. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Confucius Institute at Makalere University. University Director Zhong Jianghua highlights some key achievements over the past decade, including the efforts to help the local community learn Chinese and popularize the language in Uganda. Our Confucius Institute at Makerere University was established back in 2014. By 2018, we were recognized as a top Confucius Institute globally. In the same year, we also launched the world's first local Chinese teacher training program in Uganda. Along with this, we completed the Chinese curriculum for Uganda secondary schools, which was approved by the Uganda Ministry of Education and Sports. With that, Chinese has been officially integrated into Uganda's national education system. It was at the compulsory education stage, which is secondary school. Chinese language classes started in Ugandan secondary schools in early 2019. In 2018, we had our first local teacher training 
training program ended, and over 30 local teachers went back to teach at their schools. By 2022, before the first batch of ordinary level students graduated and started advanced level education, they needed to take an examination called UCE. That was when Chinese first became part of the exam, approved by the Ugandan Ministry of Education. So Chinese became a national exam of Uganda. Once Chinese is included in the national education system in Uganda, schools have the autonomy to decide whether to offer it as an elective. As mentioned earlier, the local teacher training project in Uganda is a collaboration between the Chinese and Uganda education ministries. So far, we have trained 145 local teachers of Chinese and are currently offering the fifth training stage. Currently, there are 106 Ugandan teachers teaching Chinese in around 90 secondary schools. To support the promotion of Chinese, the Ugandan Ministry of Education and Sports has also established two dedicated positions for Chinese language specialists, selected from secondary schools and trained by us. This also reflects the Ugandan government's efforts to promote Chinese. That will do it for this edition of The Hub on CGTN. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Wang Guan in Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. I'll see you again next time. <laughs>